On Sunday afternoon, we went out for a drive in the woods. Suddenly, out of the dark forest, the snow-white car appeared, like a specter. A man got out and told me I was wanted on the phone. It was the head of the KGB, Khrushchev. He said a very serious problem has come up and asked me to come to Moscow. They even had a plane waiting for me. He didn't know why we sent for him. What exactly did you tell him? I told him we had to talk to him as foreign minister. That was all I told him. I didn't say anything else. It was late when I got to the Kremlin. I walked into Pavlov's office. All the top leaders were there except Gorbachev. No one took the lead. They were sitting at the long table or milling around. The chairman's desk was not occupied. The foreign minister entered Prime Minister Pavlov's office to find the coup leaders. KGB Chief Khrushchev, Defense Minister Yazov, Prime Minister Pavlov, and Vice President Yanayev, the men who organized the trip down to the Crimea. Speaker of the Soviet Parliament Lukyanov had been called back from his vacation, like Foreign Minister Besmertnik. All waited for the news. Our delegation came back from Gorbachev with long faces. He had dismissed them. What they claimed he'd said, do it. You'll see what happens. The majority of people there, even members of the committee, had no idea what was going on. Kuchkov took me next door. He said, we're forming an emergency committee to govern the country in this state of emergency. You're going to be on it. I asked quietly, is this Gorbachev's idea? Is this his solution to the crisis? He hesitated for a moment and then said, no, Gorbachev is seriously ill. Then I said, no, I won't be a member of that committee. I vividly remember what Lukyanov said. He said, give me your plan. Show me what you have in mind. I said, there is no plan. After the coup, Lukyanov gave the Soviet parliament his version of how he had reacted. I immediately told the plotters that as chairman of the Supreme Soviet, I had no intention of taking part in the work of that emergency committee. And I said, I'm not going to sign any of your documents. Lukyanov had not revealed the full story. Lukyanov said he wouldn't have anything to do with it. The only thing he would do was publish a statement in the name of the Supreme Soviet saying that Gorbachev's Union Treaty, which was to be signed on the 20th, was unconstitutional. Lukyanov was the guardian of the Soviet Constitution. He was saying Gorbachev's Union Treaty was illegal and therefore provided a justification for the coup. But the conspirators also needed a public reason for acting quickly. At that point, we realized we had to make uh, Vice President Yanayev the president. According to the Constitution, the Vice President takes over if the President is ill. We needed Vice President Yanayev to sign our statement. Although Gorbachev wasn't sick at all, we had to make it look as if he were. And we told him, you have to sign. There's no going back now. They drew up a statement saying Vice President Yanayev was assuming power due to Gorbachev's ill health. 
The statement began making the rounds. That little piece of paper went from Yanayev to me, from me to Yazov, then back to Yanayev again. Nobody wanted to sign it. Well, finally, at four in the morning, we signed the statement. Yanayev signed first. Then he and Pavlov signed a, an appeal to the nation. Yanayev insisted we put our signatures on it so we would all be responsible.